Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket is probably one of the most iconic roller coasters in Florida. I'd say the most iconic coaster at Universal. It's famous for that vertical lift hill, really steep drop, and it's a huge hit with the public, but most enthusiasts when you ask them will tell you that it's pretty okay. And I'm gonna echo what they say, it's pretty alright. Nothing about this ride wowed me. I will say it was better than I expected, but I think that's because I had really low expectations for it. I was told the ride was rough, shaky, and had a really boring layout, and I'll agree with a lot of those points. I actually didn't think it was rough. I can see how in certain spots the track would kind of vibrate depending on where you're sitting. I rode this ride twice, and unfortunately because of where we were, you can't choose where you sat, so I did not get a back seat nor a front seat ride. I did get a ride towards the front and one towards the back, but not in the very front or the very back. And that actually goes into a side note, I think part of that reason is because of the way that they have this whole line and queue system worked out the ride actually has a moving loading station so the train never stops moving definitely helps increase capacity which is nice and to help increase capacity even more you can actually wait in the single rider line this is something I highly recommend because it doesn't matter if you ride with your family members or not I mean maybe that's just my opinion but it can save you a crap ton of time I highly recommend just waiting in the single rider line and while we're on the subject of waiting in line, be sure to note that this is one of those rides where you can't have anything in your pockets. You can't have a phone with you while you wait in line, no electronics because they have metal detectors. Thank goodness though Universal has free lockers, but I'll get more into that in the Universal Studios Florida Park review. But just note that that is something that you have to think about when you go to ride this ride. Let's get into the ride experience. So when you sit in your vehicle, you're going to pick your song. I thought that's a pretty neat feature and actually the music Music worked throughout the entire ride, which it's rare nowadays that you find a coaster that plays on-ride audio that actually works the entire time. Six Flags has tried it and it's failed. It works well in California Screamin', and this is another one that it works very well on. I know there's going to be some people that are going to ask, which song did you pick? I know I picked two different songs, but I do not remember, guys, which two I picked. I couldn't even tell you most of the songs on the playlist. So I'm sorry, but I do not remember which ones I picked. But talking a bit about the layout, so I really do like that first vertical lift hill. That's a really cool moment. I'm a big fan of vertical lift hills. And you crest over, and then you have this drop. And this drop confuses me. Like, if you have a vertical lift hill, typically, you then go into a vertical drop or a beyond vertical drop. But no, this one is neither. Yeah, it's pretty steep, but it's like, wait a minute, hold on. We could totally go steeper here. But it's also by a manufacturer that isn't exactly known for making great rides. This is Mauer. They've done some pretty all right stuff. Nothing that has really wowed me, and I'll definitely second that with this ride. So then you have that drop. I mean, it's good, I guess. Nothing that's really stunned me. I will say it's probably the best drop on a roller coaster at Universal. I don't know if that's really saying much, but that's also because Hulk's first drop is mainly an inversion. So I'm not sure I'd even really classify that as a drop to begin with. So yeah, I'll say this has the best drop in the park. Next, we have a non-inverting loop, and actually this is pretty cool. I really did enjoy this element. It's like a vertical loop, but you twist out at the top and then dive back down. It's pretty neat. If you haven't done one of these elements, they're fun. And this is when the mid-course brake runs began. Oh my gosh, there are so many mid-course brake runs on this ride. At this point, it isn't even mid-course. It's like, there's like seven of these things. I don't know. It's ridiculous. I understand that is because of capacity. Each train doesn't hold too many people, so they need those mid-course brake runs so that they can be sending lots of trains. I understand that, but as a layout, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket suffers. You'll pop up into a mid-course brake run, and then you'll fall out of that mid-course brake run. Do some stuff, go into another one, and then you go down. Do some stuff, go into another one, and then a few more, and then five more, and then, yeah. It's not huge on that. I will say, when you're going in and out of these things, sometimes you'll get a little pop of airtime going in, or a little pop of airtime coming out. Just depends on where you're seated. But that did surprise me. I wasn't expecting that. And it's not like the mid-course brake runs really slow you down. They're just kind of there. But still, that's not something that I love loved about this ride. But I guess when you have millions of people going to your park every single year, it makes sense. So some other elements for this ride, we got a couple more steep drops. We have this helix, which actually I grayed out during this. I was told that this ride was pretty forceless, but I actually had a gray out on that helix towards the back part of the ride. I was surprised about that. So it actually pulls some forces, believe it or not. 
But next, we got a few more mid course brake runs that twists around a bit, and then towards the end of the ride, it really does start to die down. You just kind of twist around, and then it's like, okay, what is going on here? The back part of the ride is pretty much there just to have an extended ride time. So at least we're not saying it's a short ride, because it's not a short ride, it is a long ride. But it just so happens that the last part of the ride is pretty boring it's mediocre there's nothing there there's no substance it just goes into like a few twists like a little bunny hop doesn't really give any air it's just kind of like okay is this here so that we can actually finish out the song is that the purpose of this i don't really know quite what they were thinking there but like i said i did actually end up enjoying the ride more than i expected to just because i was thinking that i was going to get off saying that was dumb and i didn't think it was dumb i thought part of the layout was dumb but as a ride it was fine. So for its final score, I'm going to give Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket a solid 6. The way I see is that if 5 and below is considered not a good ride, this ride sits just above where it's like, okay, if you're an avid coaster enthusiast and you've ridden lots of coasters, you probably won't really remember this ride. It's pretty forgettable. But if you're someone who doesn't ride roller coasters very often and you ride this, you'll probably enjoy it. I can see how that vertical lift hill and drop would scare a lot of people. Just look at Jimmy Fallon and Kevin Hart, terrified. So those are just some of my thoughts on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket Universal Studios Florida in Orlando. Let me know what you think of this ride. Do you agree with my opinions? Do you disagree? Feel free to post those in the comment section below. And of course, stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios.